Late night, Jimmy Kimmel is already known for his gags. You are not the fuck. But the 50-year-old Brooklyn-born comic has distinguished himself in the past year for his political activism. My family has health insurance. We don't have to worry about this, but other people do. Most recently, an emotional response to the 17 killed in Parkland, Florida. Children are being murdered. What do you say to your critics that say, who are you to speak out on these issues? I'm an American. That's who I am. You know, a lot of people are going with this line of reasoning where they say people in show business shouldn't speak out about politics, and yet um, they elected Donald Trump the president of the United States. So I think that argument is pretty well jumped out the window. He tweets a typo at midnight, then wakes up and claims it was a secret message. <laughs> Do you think that maybe there have been times where you push the envelope too far and maybe become a little too political? No, I don't. You don't regret anything that you've said? Not at all. I'm still doing a comedy show and I need to be funny and entertain my audience, but I also think that we've matured enough to the point where we can accept uh, late night talk show hosts speaking about a serious subject and I think that it's almost necessary now. This new outspoken Kimmel will host the Oscars this Sunday, his second in a row. For Kimmel, the show presents a golden opportunity. So much has happened since you hosted last year. We have Time's Up movement, Me Too movement, everything that's going on with gun control and politics. Are, yeah. you, are you nervous at all that you're going to strike the right tone? Yeah, that, I do worry about that because I have a tendency to not strike the right tone. Um, in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a really tough year yeah, to try I mean, to be a comedian in light of everything that's going on. Sometimes it actually goes the other way. Sometimes people are so tense and worried about that kind of stuff and serious that it actually makes people, it's almost like in a way laughing at a funeral. Sometimes that will play to your advantage. How will you know if you've gone too far? I'm sure the internet will tell me. <laughs> you probably saw there was a USA Today poll that was released recently that said 94% of women in Hollywood have been harassed or assaulted. That's your audience right there. It's, yeah. How do you address it? Well, listen, here's the thing. This show is not about reliving people's sexual assaults. It's an award show for people who have been dreaming about maybe winning an Oscar for their whole lives. And the last thing I want to do is ruin that for someone who is, you know, nominated for, you know, best leading actress or you know, best supporting or best director or cinematographer or whatever by making it unpleasant. I, you know, that's, that's not what I want to do. Meryl Streep has phoned it in for more than 50 films. <laughs> The jokes were flowing during Kimmel's Oscar debut last year with many of his signature stunts. Hello there. You might remember the awestruck tour group walking into Dolby Theater. Let me give you a little tour. This is Nicole Kidman. Or the candy parachutes falling from the ceiling. And who could forget La La Land, that infamous best picture snafu. There's a mistake. Moonlight, you guys won best picture. I'm still not clear on how the wrong envelope got into Warren Beatty's hands. I'll be honest, it would be funny if it happened again. So are there any safeguards in place this year to make sure what happened last year doesn't happen again? I think that the biggest safeguard there is is that this company, PricewaterhouseCoopers, will literally have to go out of business if, <laughs> if they do it a second time. So I think they're going to be very, very careful. It's been a whirlwind year for the late night talk show host. His son Billy was born with a congenital heart defect and had open heart surgery just days after birth. Jimmy sharing his family's struggle on the show. Billy was born with... Um, a heart disease. He had another open heart surgery uh, last year, and um, we're having his lips done uh, when he turns <laughs> six. No, he's. Um, Is he okay with that? He asked for it. It was his decision. We don't force these things on our children. <laughs> He is, no, he's having see that one coming. another open heart surgery when he's around six years old. You love to shock people. You just shocked me with that. <laughs> it helps me uh, get through the get serious through moments. But he's a happy boy. He's, he's a very happy boy. It's crazy. I mean, he has no idea what happened. Yeah. Like, sometimes I look at him and go, you don't, <laughs> you have no clue. You don't care what we went through, yeah. do you? You he's, just want oatmeal. And prepping for Sunday is a family affair for Kimmel, working closely with his wife Molly, who's the head writer for Jimmy Kimmel Live and also co-head writer for the Oscars. Does she have the final say? 
no, I have the final say. Don't be silly. I'm the one who has to say it. In any scenario, this is a great lesson for young comedy writers. If you have the final say and the person who's saying it doesn't, yeah. you've probably got a problem. Do you have any anxiety going into this year? I want to make sure everything is right and the jokes are as good as they can possibly be. I have now whittled it down to probably 500 jokes. So by hopefully the end of next week, I'll have whittled that down to 100 jokes, and uh -huh. then we'll get into the... How many jokes will make the final cut? Probably 30, I guess. So you go from about 500 to 30. No, I go from thousands to 30. Oh, my goodness yeah. gracious. Jokes aside, it's actually Kimmel's quest for imperfection that he thinks makes any show a success. As long as nobody's getting crushed, I think it's fun when things go wrong. I knew I would screw this show up. I really did. <laughs> The worst thing that could happen is everything goes perfectly. You don't want things to go perfectly. You no. secretly want the wheels to fall off a little bit. At least one wheel would be nice. At least one, yeah. not two? Uh, two wheels, you're grounded, but one wheel you can repair. You kind of thrive on the chaos, don't you? I do. I like it when there's a little, uh, you have to kind of stay on mm -hmm. your toes. For Nightline, I'm Paula Ferris in Los Angeles. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.